I did a video not too long ago about what Wi-Fi 6 is and why your next router should have it. But I figured in this video, I would answer the next obvious question. Which Wi-Fi 6 router do you get? So I went out and bought a bunch of them and tested them all out. And I think now I have a pretty good list of the best Wi-Fi 6 systems that you can buy right now and which is best for which scenario. Firstly, let's get started with the TP-Link Archer AX3000. Now I've been a fan of TP-Link's products lately as they seem to be really good at getting the tech that you'd find in higher end devices for a lot less money. And this router is no exception. Full disclosure, unlike the others on this list that I had to go buy, the Archer AX3000 and the AX6000 were sent to me by TP-Link for this video. So the Archer AX3000 is easily the least flashy looking router on this list. You'll see what I mean by that in a sec. And at just $129, it's also probably the least expensive way to get the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 in your house, period. Now, since you're watching this video, I assume you already are familiar with the benefits of Wi-Fi 6. Bump in speed, ability to handle a lot more devices on the network and future-proofing, battery savings for Wi-Fi 6 devices on the network, etc., etc. If not, though, or if you just want a deeper dive into all of them, you can check out my video on what Wi-Fi 6 is at the link below. Back to the router. The AX3000 uses TP-Link's own app, as most of the systems on this list do, which makes it easy to set everything up. You plug the router in, turn it on, open the app, and it'll walk you through the setup process. All in all, it takes maybe five minutes, tops. We also have some extra features in the app that are clever, like parental controls that allow you to limit usage, pause access, block certain sites, and other features that you will like, but your kids will hate. On the back, there are four gigabit ethernet ports for you to plug in other networking devices, as well as a USB 2.0 port. The top speed of this router is three gigabits per second, or 3000 megabits per second, as denoted by the AX3000 in its name. But it's worth noting that TP-Link also makes an AX6000 and an AX11000 model that, as the names would suggest based on that, increase the throughput to six and 11 gigabits per second. Like some others on this list we'll get to in a sec. And we'll also talk a bit more about the speeds on the various routers and what they really translate to in real life. Now these higher end units like the AX6000 also add more ethernet ports if you need to plug in more networking devices, faster USB ports for storage, etc. But of course, with the added features, they also have higher price tags. Albeit again, TP-Link still seems to come in at less than the other AX6000 and AX11000 devices on this list. The bottom line on this router is that if you want the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 without having to pay a ton, the TP-Link AX3000 and AX6000 and 11000 are going to probably be your best bet for the money. If you wanna check out any of these routers, you can check out the link below for the best price I could find. Now, if you don't mind spending a bit more money and are looking for some higher specs and or maybe you just want your router to look like a Star Wars Imperial shuttle, then the Netgear Nighthawk AX8 is a solid option. Its unique shape is probably also the image you've seen if you've ever looked up Wi-Fi 6. And the reason for that is that it's one of the first that came to market. Now, thankfully, it's been out long enough for the price tag to come down a tiny bit from $399 to $349, making it still not cheap, but definitely a bit better of an option than when it first launched. That unique look, by the way, is due to the arrangement of the antennas inside these fins instead of the usual tent poles that we're used to seeing. These things each have two antennas in them and give the Nighthawk AX8 four antennas that it can use to produce eight streams of data at once, hence the eight in AX8, making it able to handle more devices being used on the network at once. It also features five gigabit ethernet ports, two USB ports for a NAS or printer, and an up to two gigabit per second WAN port by aggregating the WAN and an extra ethernet port. That allows you to connect to the internet at up to two gigabits per second if you have the infrastructure in your house that supports it. Now, chances are that unless you have some crazy business account of some sort, you won't have over one gigabit per second if you even have that. So this might not be a benefit to you regardless. If you wanna learn more about this router, you can check out the link below again for the cheapest price I could find on that one. The next one on this list is not only Wi-Fi 6, but it's also a mesh system. You can check out my video on that at this link below and what mesh systems are and what they mean. Basically though, this is really for people who have larger homes or offices, etc., and a lot of devices. That is because you can use the two mesh units it comes with to get about 6,000 square feet of coverage, and you can also add more units to the system to increase the range even further. The mesh Wi-Fi 6 system I'm using here is called the Aris Surfboard Max Plus. Max with AX in it, get it? 
This comes with two nodes that are identical. So either can be plugged into the incoming internet cable. Both have the same four gigabit ethernet ports located on the bottom of them. One has to be used for that incoming internet on the one unit, giving you three on that one really. And both have the same distinct look. That look is actually kind of nice in my opinion, but they are not compact by any means. So you'll need a decent amount of headroom wherever you place them. The system is a tri-band system, so it can broadcast Wi-Fi 6 in 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz from each node, but also has a third Wi-Fi 6 backhaul band that is used to just transmit data between the nodes, which translates to faster speeds across the system, essentially. They have their own Eris Surfboard Max Manager app that, like the others on this list, makes it pretty easy to set up. Once it's set up, it has basic network control features and includes parental controls and the ability to create guest networks, but that's about it. A unique feature of this mesh router system is that each node is also Alexa enabled. So in the app, you can connect your Amazon Alexa account and then tell your Alexa speaker to restart the router, turn on the guest network, etc. Now for this setup and all these features, you are looking at about $3.99 for the pack of two units and you can find more info on it at the link below. If you're a gamer and money is no object, may I present the ASUS ROG Rapture GTAX 11000. If you weren't sure if it was a gaming router, by the way, well, it has an LED enabled ROG logo on the top, so now there's no mistaking that. In addition to the gamer aesthetic though, there are some unique gaming features. Firstly, it can apparently prioritize gaming traffic. So it identifies what data you're sending and confirms that it's a game, and then also identifies the gaming server you are connected to and tries to decrease the lag between the two, claiming up to a 90% lower ping. Being an ROG device, it also has a way to prioritize other ROG devices, whether it's their phone, laptops, etc. if you have one of those as well. The device is also tri-band, so it has a 2.4 gigahertz band as well as two 5 gigahertz bands, with the second one meant to be used for, you guessed it, gaming. The idea behind that is that you can have your normal devices on the faster 5 gigahertz instead of the 2.4 one, but have things you want to have their own data streams for. So like maybe a Wi-Fi enabled controller to decrease the lag. You put that on that second 5 gigahertz gaming band. For ports, we have a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port for faster NAS connections than the standard one gigabit per second port that we're used to, of which by the way, we have four. We also have two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and a one gigabit per second WAN port to connect to the internet. It also supports link aggregation. So you can connect your NAS if it supports it to the 2.5 gigabit per second port plus the other free gigabit ethernet ports to have the combined speed available for transferring to and from the NAS. This massive gaming router will set you back about $400 and you can check it out at the link below. Now, Part of the reason though that this model is more expensive along with the other units that aren't the TP-Link ones is because the AX number I mentioned before. It basically denotes that they use a faster protocol for the Wi-Fi. In the case of ROG, it uses AX11000, whereas the Mesh and the Imperial Shuttle use AX6000 and AX7800. And the Archer AX3000 from TP-Link on this list uses AX3000. But connecting to the internet will most likely, for all of these, unless you have some sort of crazy dedicated business internet line, be your bottleneck. For example, my gigabit Fios connection is one of the fastest speeds available to residents in New York City. And since a gigabit is a thousand megabits per second to the router, that means that the under even 3000 megabits per second over Wi-Fi is way higher than I'd ever need. With my speeds using Ookla speed test on all of these routers hovering around 300 megabits per second. The extra speed is valuable though, if there are things you want to connect with in your home. For example, network attached storage, Plex servers anyone, or peer-to-peer -peer systems that support those types of speeds can communicate with each other through the network faster since they don't need access to the outside internet. There you guys, the best Wi-Fi 6 routers I could find for each scenario. Uh, you, again, you can check out the links below to see all of them. Um, but let me know what you guys think of this video uh, in the comments below. Love to hear from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, I started a new series on this channel called Decoder where I explain a piece of tech every week. Um, that What is Wi-Fi 6 video was the first episode of that. I'll leave a link here. I'll leave a link here and uh, go check that out. Leave me a comment on there. Let me know what you think of that series. If there are any other topics that you guys would like to see me decode, etc. Really appreciate it. As always though, guys, regardless, thanks for watching.